Okay, everyone, welcome back to OCD Hi-Fi Guy. Today we will talk about, um, well, kind of the basics. One of the basics is getting AC power squared away. Uh, you know, you got a rack. We got some AC power back there. We really want to get it squared away. The first one of the first basics is to get nice, clean AC power. Um, I am one that does not believe in um, power conditioning like transformers and stuff and big old boxes in the way that I plug into. Now, okay, that being said, it's because I don't need to, I don't feel the need to worry about lightning. If you do, uh, well, first of all, I'm pretty sure lightning jumps everything and kills your stuff anyways. But if I know a storm's coming, I unplug my rig. And, and just the main and, and everything else is, un, is plugged into that. Um, so if that's, if that's uh, as long as that's not a concern, um, then I just go out of the wall, okay? But it's not just out of the regular wall socket. Y'all know it's a fear attack. We can sort of see back there. See that black one on the left? Kind of, okay, so that is a full fear attack, top of the line, GTX, carbon fiber, NCF, blah, 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 blah. The white one next to it's just the regular house uh line that that was actually a dedicated line that I ran out here originally uh and then next to it is of course the the new uh line for the AC power for this room um and um I'll show you this is something I made to these pieces there um let's go around back but something that I that really is a bothers me <laughs> which is a lot of things I suppose you know by now okay so you see that plug right there that's the plug I just showed you Okay, if we have a normal power cord in, well, one of my foils or whatever, that's all I use, is uh, they stick out like this, okay? Because just the way this one actually isn't even, normally there's even a leather piece on there that, that, that makes it stick out. Well, I just don't like things sticking out from the wall and a bunch of snaky cables on the floor laying all over on top of each other. I like it organized. And so what I did was I made one of my statement cables uh into a 90 degree okay so this thing is going to you see that carbon on there pretty sweet carbon fiber huh um anyways okay so this puppy is going to go straight in and it's just going to come straight down you know and then and then straight down to the power strip okay so this is the next piece and this is just distribution this is just going to distribute the power let's see um so i have this i did this in a uh in a in a, in a pyramid sort of a shape if you can see, let's see, you see like this, okay? And the reason being is because I want to be able to stand over it, plug into it, and uh, plug out of it. And, and, and if, if cables are, are, are heavy or something, I don't want this thing. This is, for, for instance, very, very heavy. Um, but you don't want it toppling over, and I want to be able to plug in and out, and especially the main right here, which is at an angle. So you can plug the main in and out from standing and you don't need two hands. Normally, on a normal power strip, you'd have to put a hand back there and then pull it out or push it in. It's tough to get this one in, the, the feed. Um, and then, of course, you know, these are all, you can see GTX, FearTech GTX. Oh, I got a little schmutz there. Um, um, anyways, uh, GTX, and then same with these, GTF, GTX DNCFR. So these are the top of the line. They're ridiculously expensive. They're 320 bucks or something like that, but of course, you know, um, I am a manufacturer, so I get them for less. Um, and if you all want any, let me know because I'll get you a discount. Um, anyways, uh, here is, uh, this is the ground. Okay, so I have the grounds in here. The safety ground that is right here goes out to the, you know, third pin, which goes into the into the wall. This is a secondary uh, uh, ground, which has, like, I've got a Faraday shield in here and then um, some other... Uh, copper straps that go across all these three and basically it's an additional shield um, uh, and, and then also if you want to you can ground into this off your components so like you see those um, it just allows you an extra ground point so uh, if you want to ground something from your components you can put it to uh, the chassis and then just run it right down here and then the, and you don't have to worry about sticking it into a plug or whatever on the wall because you've got your ground right here uh, additional ground. So, um, so that's how that goes. Um, I have some nice, uh, rubber feet on here, uh, that are isolation, uh, sort of feet. And they also grip it to the floor cause it's hardwood back there. So I don't want to put cones or something that are just hard and slide all over the place. And this thing slides like nuts. I want it to stay on the ground and stay nice and, and, and firm. So, um, okay. So let me go over there. I'm going to stick this in and then get you a picture or film after 
we've got her in so you can see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Okay, so before I show you that, how about I show you a little little candy here. Um, this is probably, this is another cable I made. Uh, and this is a Statement 3. Um, it's a little loud. I had some fun with this jacket just to see what it looks like. It's pretty bad to the bone and it lets you know. Um, this is the puppy that, okay, check this out. This is a complete handmade power plug. Um, I made this 100% out of pure 5'9 silver bar, you know, like look at that. You can, well, it's hard to see. You can't, you can't really tell, but um, uh, this is um, made 100% from scratch. Uh, well, I fabricated it, you know, uh, and um, I utilize, see that wide um, blade? Uh, I, you know, it, it utilizes the whole, and this is the, the thin, the not as wide blade, you know, uh, so... It uses the whole slot. When you plug into those NCF R's, you'll see that there's one of the slots is taller than the other. But the Furitech plugs, they aren't, the blades aren't as tall. So I made my own out of, well, out of pure silver, which nobody makes. Uh, and then, um, you know, made it exactly the, the, the proper height. So I can max out, I can max out the surface area. Um, this is just probably to date my most uh, extravagant power cord build. Um, and, uh, this end I use a uh, fear tech that you use the, uh, their ends and then just slide it into my carbon. What, what, the reason why I put it into this carbon, um, a piece like that, or this carbon tube is that I come in from the back and I backfill it with my mineral loaded epoxy. And then it allows me to remove the screws. Okay. Out of the two sides, not only that, but inside here, there's a clamping mechanism that is screws and that you have to tighten to put a wire on there. Okay, well, I don't use wires, right? This is all foil. So I can go in here and I can, and it's the same with, with this piece. What's really kick-ass about this one is these bars go all the way through and make direct contact with the foils. So they avoid everything in between. If you were to look in, in a normal plug, there's a clamp mechanism, there's a screw, there's two pieces of, 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 of metal or, or one piece of a clamping thing that's squeezing down onto it. And that's how you have to do it um, because to take it on and off and on and off, whatever. Uh, so I avoid all that stuff by using this tube. Um, I can avoid all the screws. I can avoid all the clamps and everything metal that's inside here, which cause magnetism and eddy currents. I can get rid of all that stuff. And so this is just a pure conductor <clears throat> that just one piece here and then right to the foil. So it's two pieces and that's it. They connect right at the foil. Um, and, and this one has, this one is, I have, let's see. So there's the, yeah, they, they, they have these little pinchers because it's an IEC. So there's a little clamp in there, like a little thing like this. And, you, and, and then um, on the back of that, I attach my piece of silver uh, strap like that or, or, or bar. And then it goes into here onto the foil. So that one, this one has three pieces and this has just two. Um, but either both of them eliminate all the screws. So no magnetism in the, in, in the head shells of those. And um, it's, it's, it's crazy when you start to do, when you start to go to this level of a build, uh, you would not believe when, when you have an audio system, you know, that is, you know, a really killer audio rig, um, you, you would not believe the little things that you hear. And you would not believe what happens when you do the little things throughout from the front of the rig to the back of the rig. You do this every little things like this every single step of the way. You would not believe what the end result is. It's freaking stunning. So, um, I'm not sure I would say go ahead and build your own power cord like this. I've got many, many years of trial and error, and um, I have not been electrocuted, thank God. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous territory, and things will explode and blow up, and amps will go, and, and, and you'll, you'll mess things up. So I wouldn't play around unless you know what you're doing. Um, okay, so this is going to go in. This normally I have, I keep this on the DAC. The DAC is the most important place to have your best power cord. So um, that, that you'll hear that more than anything. So that'll be Vermeer. Or, and we're going to do this in a second coming up. I'm getting ready for it right now. Vermeer versus Rockna. Okay. That little MSB thing up, up top is at, I think that's the coolest. Those two little pieces are a DAC on the top and a power supply on the bottom. Those two little pancakes. And I'm telling you, that is one of the coolest looking DAC I've, I've seen, man. It's such a cool chassis. Too bad it sounds not very good, man. 
it's a it's a it's a it's an analog MSB an analog DAC. It doesn't sound that good. It's kind of rolled off. I mean, there's other ones that are just as good for way less money. This is like ten grand or something like that. It's for sale for five. If anybody wants it, but um, these uh uh uh, uh the Rockna is the real daddyo. And then the, the, the Vermeer, they're actually two different. Okay, Rockna is an example of probably, w w which I could say my favorite uh, uh, R2R, um, R2R DAC, okay? And then this one is, um, this one is Sigma Delta or Delta Sigma. So it's cool. This is the best of R2R. This is the best of Sigma Delta. Um, and um, they're very interesting to listen to. This one has a little tube on the output, a little teeny vacuum tubes on two of them. And then this is just solid state output, uh, uh, a, um, a, a class A buffer, like a handmade little little buffer. This thing has like 14 volts out or something insane. Um, and uh, and they, they both sound good. So we're going to compare these two because they're the two top DACs in this room. Um, and also, uh, someone wanted to hear, uh, look at that over there, Terminator. Okay, look, Terminator is a great DAC. There's no question. It's phenomenal. It's awesome. It is not the end all be all in terms of, okay, that's a $4,000, this is 4,500 bucks, that DAC, okay? This is 20,000, okay? And this one is 16. So you do get what you're paying for. And that's, I guess, what the, what the video will, be, will intend to show is that you do get what you're paying for in DACs. And the reason I even have these two DACs is because I was trying to prove that you didn't get more when you bought a $15,000 DAC. Now, luckily, I'm in the business, and I trade, and people trade me in, and I beg, borrow, steal, cajole, whatever you want to call it. I don't have to pay through the nose for these things, you know? So I'm, I'm lucky in that regard. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it just because they're expensive does not mean they sound good, okay? But there is some of these that you do get what you pay for, okay? Not all the $20,000 DACs are killer. There's only a few of them. Not all, some of these uh, other, the companies um, <clears throat> uh, are overpriced. Um, other ones are, you get what you pay for, okay? So, mm, you know, can, is it, you guys decide, you know? Okay, for me, I'm one of those weirdos that if it's just like a little bit better, you know, uh, if it's a different league in that little bit better, then yeah, it's worth the five grand more or whatever, because this is what I do for a living. This is what I, I live and breathe by the audio rig, you know, and I'm about the music. And you know what happens is like something like, like either of these DAX, uh, really puts the music across in a way that's like, Oh, how do I explain this? Okay, so let's say you were uh, meditate, you, you're into meditation, okay? And let's say, well, we can focus on that. Let's say you're into meditation, right? Um, and, you know, you could uh, sit in a room that would instantly bring you into meditation level, like super deep, just because of whatever, the, the, the smell of the incense burning and the something going on, the vibe in the room. It's like, you know, a um, consecrated space or something. And you just close your eyes and bam, you're right there deep in meditation. And then you have the other room that it takes you half an hour to get in the meditation or something that's eh, not quite the same energy. Well, okay, so these DACs, the, 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 the sound that comes out, the sound that you get using these with the good rig, okay, is sublime. And music, for me, it's religion. When I come in here, I'm going to church. When I close my eyes, I transcend earth. I go, man. And so these help that along. And so to me, it's the light, it's, it's you know... it. it it's it. Oh, I think you know what I'm getting at, right? Okay. Other people, you know, it's Harley Choppers. It's different things. It's uh, you know, sports memorabilia for 15 grand, whatever. Okay. I spend my money on audio, cause that's what I love. Um. Anyways, so um, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not even go into that. I'm gonna get rolling. Okay. So, anyways, we're back on AC. Get there. AC craziness. AC super killer power cords. We've got it. Oh, wasn't I supposed to come back here and show you? I think I was. Yep. I see that? I didn't even want to even pay attention. Okay, so look at that. Okay, look at how that puppy sits on the wall, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so that thing drops straight down, goes straight into the power strip, which is right. Chow. It's a, There's no light back here, man. If I had some light, I would... Let's see, maybe I can go in the closet and turn this thing on. Maybe get some light in the subject here, maybe. A little bit, not really. But, okay, so anyways... That is sweet. It drops straight down. It's not poking straight out over towards a rack. 
I will have two of these. Here's one that's there. I'll put a second one in and I'll have to be crafty about how to get it to go over that, but I'll do it. And then uh, I'll have one for digital, one for analog. So I'll have two separate power strips. Um, okay, so that concludes this session of OCD Hi-Fi Guy. Thank you guys for joining and I'll be back.